Hello, my friends. It is Ash Wednesday in a year when many of the traditions that we have come to know are not available to us, gathering together for worship and for communion, and also the marking of ashes on our foreheads is a sign of this journey beginning today. You might be interested to know that the ashes themselves have not always been a part of the Christian tradition. Like many things, they developed with time, and it wasn't until around the year 1000 that it became normative in Western Christianity that you would receive ashes on Ash Wednesday as a mark of your mortal nature. Now, before that, there had always been a journey toward Easter. From the earliest days of Christianity, they marked with intention the 40 days leading up to Easter, to Holy Week, Good Friday, the death and resurrection of Christ. And I think that in this year when so much has been taken away from us, we can also see the taking away of some of these many wonderful traditions that have accumulated along the way that point us backwards, maybe with a bit of grace, to what lies beneath all of it, this journey towards Easter and towards resurrection. Today without ashes, we join with them in their prayers, in their intentions, their penitence, their fasting, setting their hearts and their minds squarely on Easter. We share with them in the hope that we now can set our sights on the resurrection that lives beyond all of this. So it is, I welcome you to this online service of music, scripture, prayers, and pray that we together can begin this journey through the next 40 days towards death and resurrection and new life.
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joel, the second chapter, beginning at the first verse. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. There like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter to the Corinthians, the fifth chapter, beginning at the 20th verse. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way. Through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, 
as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ according to Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. The deepest meaning of Ash Wednesday is how it points us toward Easter, to that wonderful celebration of joy and resurrection, and yet it does so 
with a particular grounding in life and reality. The ways of the world are apparently clear. And I think that on the other side of this journey towards Easter, that we ought to be able to come back and perform an autopsy about everything that we learned about life and death along the way. Except we never really do that. By the time Easter comes, the joy is overwhelming, and so we move on with our lives and our hopes and our dreams. I think today might be the only opportunity that we have in these coming days of Lent to think about how the disappointments of life and death are also met in the story of Jesus and his resurrection the first Easter Sunday. There was a time when I tried to articulate this on Easter, and it was a great disaster, a reminder of how difficult it is to mix the disappointments of life and the joy of resurrection. It was the first time that I ever preached on Easter Sunday. As a young priest, as assistant clergy, we never preach on Easter or Christmas. That job is left to the rector. And so it was my first Sunday my first Easter Sunday as a rector, I got up to preach. And I tried to articulate this. I tried to say that our expectations about life and death might not be as different in our modern world than they were in the age of Jesus, in the strange world of the Bible. I think sometimes we come to Easter and its strange and wonderful proclamation and we simply imagine we don't see the world as they did. That message of hope might have meant something different to them because they saw the world so differently. And then I said to that church on Easter Sunday, it was no different back then. Dead people stayed dead. Dead people stayed dead. You could hear the groans throughout the church, I could kind of see the Easter lilies flopping over. I learned something that day, that in the face of resurrection, all of the pain and the scars and the realities of life don't always need to be spoken. But I also learned that there is something enduringly true in being, to, in being able to articulate the difference. I came across it years later. It was the writing of a priest in the Church of England in the Diocese of Canterbury, the Reverend David Bretherton. Father Bretherton talks about the difference between resuscitation and resurrection. That's what I should have said that first Sunday when I had to preach on Easter. There is a difference between resuscitation and resurrection. Resuscitation we all know well. The woman on the street corner, corner who collapses and the paramedics come and keep her from dying. The man in the hospital, in the emergency room, who dies briefly and they're able to bring him back to life. That's resuscitation. Resurrection, on the other hand, has at its heart that something has died. Completely died, life has done its worst, and hope is gone. And then on the other side of death, God calls something new and wonderful and unexpected and eternal into being. And that is resurrection. We should never give ourselves to the hope of resuscitation, that something just didn't die, or almost died and was brought back. No. In the story of Lent and Easter, we give ourselves to the hope of death doing its worst. And yet, on the other side, God brings us to something new, and unexpected and wonderful and eternal. I think in this year of 2021, that also has 
a new meaning for all of us. We pray that over the next 40 days, this death and separation that we've all been involved in is going to begin to lose its grips on us. But there again, I think we ought to ask ourselves, in light of the gospel, are we praying for resuscitation, or are we praying for resurrection? Are we just praying that the old world and the old life will come back again, and that we can take our part in it, including its anxieties, its fears, its inequity, its injustice, or are we praying that in all of this, maybe something has died that ought to have died, and that God, in ways that we cannot fully imagine, on the other side of all of this, might call us to a new life, with fullness and hope and eternal joys. That's my prayer for all of us on this Ash Wednesday as we enter the holy season of Lent, setting our sights on Easter 2021, whatever it may be. My friends, this year, as always, we are not on a journey to resuscitation. We are on a pilgrimage to resurrection. May Christ always give us grace to follow him in that path. Amen. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior, and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew with repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word.
most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts, our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe in his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day and that the rest of our lives hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with every good thing so that you may do his will, working in you all that which is well-pleasing in his sight. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this Ash Wednesday and remain with you always. Amen.